Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, so we have today the uh, early K5HL that I recently got. Um, we're going to see how she sounds. Um, I did do a uh, quick checkup on all the bells. Haven't done any cleaning or anything. I just opened up the back caps and uh, took a look at a few things before testing it. Uh, so this will be the first test and um, we'll uh, get you guys set in a good spot and we'll uh, give her a honk and see how she sounds and then I'll kind of talk about uh, some of the things that I found when I opened her up so just bear with me a minute guys Alrighty, so hopefully that, it sounded pretty decent. Um, I'll have to listen back to the video and uh, see exactly what's going on sound-wise because I can't really hear too much with these things on, but it sounded pretty good uh, from where I was standing. So uh, let's talk about what was going on um, when I opened it up. So you guys see I have my other early BNSF K5HL out. Um, there's a reason for that. Well, actually, there's two reasons for that. One reason is because we're going to have a little bit of fun with this one. We're going to turn this one into a uh, K5HLA. Uh, since I have raised letter ones, I want to... I have experimented with non-raised letter one before, but not this bell uh, combo. Uh, so, uh, look forward to that one coming up. But the reason I had this open was because I had to look at the nozzles on this one and compare them to the other one. Um, and that'll come in a second part of this video. This is this video is the kickoff of all the videos for that other uh, early K5HL that's back in the garage that you heard. So it's going to be a multi-video thing. Um, next video I will have everything opened up and we will be taking an in-depth look at that. Uh, but you're probably wondering why did I need to compare the nozzles. Well, that one has a lot, and I mean a lot of nozzle wear. Um, especially the three. Um, that's why this particular bell is really being looked at, because I wanted to compare this nozzle to the other one. And um, that other one is significantly wore down uh, compared to this one, which is actually still in really good shape. Um, and I think uh, part of the reason why that is is because uh, that bell had a broken diaphragm and it was not a front diaphragm, it was a back diaphragm, thank God. Uh, it's a, it could be a real nozzle killer if you have a front diaphragm that's broken. I've, I've seen a couple nozzles that were really bit into from broken diaphragms, but anyway. So this is the diaphragm, the rear diaphragm out of the number three bell. I knew the number three had a broken diaphragm. I could hear these parts rattling around in there. And you guys can see that uh, she kind of broke into a couple different little shards there. And from what I could tell, she's been broke like this for quite a while. That's definitely the biggest piece. And then, of course, the uh, large amount of cracks and fractures. Uh, this whole... This whole disc really got pretty bad over the years. And I think it had an initial break and then a secondary break. And then um, it just kept getting worse and worse with time. Um, something else I noticed is the uh, original cushion ring. You guys can see the cushion ring really should not be looking like that. You know, it might be a little dirty, but it really shouldn't be looking like that. And uh, 
interesting thing was that those shards, once they were loose, they started to, you know, of course they were just kicking around in there all free, and they started to uh, work their way in between the front diaphragm and the cushion ring. And they started to uh, vibrate and eat away at the cushion ring. And um, my guess of why the number three nozzle is so wore down is because these shards were putting uh, extra pressure on the front diaphragm once they got in between here. And then, I mean, you guys can see eventually that they would just start to eat away at the uh, the thing itself. And um, so, so yeah, that's probably what was going on there. But that's just, I've, I've had, I've dealt with quite a few broken diaphragms in the past, but none that actually started to attack the uh, cushion ring like this. So that's pretty crazy. Um, it did, uh, it even started to eat away at the, um, the back cap. Um, and I'll show you that guys in the next video when we have it all apart. Um, especially the uh, piece that is still connected here. Uh, there's a defined line of wear on the back cap. It's not, nothing too crazy, nothing I'm worried about by any means necessary. But there is definitely a, a little line area where you could see where the uh, diaphragm was vibrating up against it. Um, so yeah, clearly before I tested it, I took this out, uh, took the old cushion ring out, I put uh, the exact same thickness cushion ring in, and I had a, uh, I have a lot of war diaphragms that are in good condition, just a little bit of wear on them, and so I found a, uh, a nice back diaphragm that's about the normal wear that this one should have been but you can see she's a whole different whole different beast there you go this side you, you can really see just how bad this one got pretty bad that's that's probably one of the more damaged ones that I've dealt with so so yeah guys uh, that's why I Kind of really had to start taking this one apart and just see how bad the nozzles were. The one bell as well on that other one has uh, some wear on it. Um, you guys can see how you have that uh, kind of an angled cut right on the right where the bore meets the nozzle there. Uh, that's been wore into. <sighs> Hold on, guys. I got a, a cat being annoying right now. Get out of here. Go on. Sorry about that, guys. So, anyway. And then uh, on the three, it's really noticeable because uh, this is probably uh, whatever the uh, height of this is. is probably about half on that other one. <laughs> so, uh, it didn't sound terrible. It still works. Uh, like I said, I'm going to listen back to the video uh, the audio on the video and uh, see exactly how she sounds. If she sounds pretty good, um, I'm probably just going to do a normal clean on it. And I mean, even with as much wear as those nozzles have, they still have a lot of life left in them. So if the horn itself sounded good, um, I'm probably going to keep everything original. Um, but if not, I am planning on putting a 3A on this. So this 3 will probably be the donor to replace the uh, really war three if I go that route we'll see um, I'm not too worried about swapping parts on these horns because they're not like super historical like like my like the CSX square tag and the uh, uh, 947 and then my 80s k5 LA there or LA sorry so you know these horns are cool there is some type of a historical value to them, but uh, at the end of the day, it's a K5HL. Um, and they're both BNSF, so like I said, I'm, it's not going to break my heart to swap some parts around if, if I go that route. We'll see. We'll see. Um, probably do some more testing with that horn after cleaning. We'll clean it up really good. And um, like I said, guys, we'll just do like a multi... Multi-part video, maybe like three, four parts, and uh, 
we'll really get into the uh, meat and potatoes on that on that horn out here. Um, but she sounded pretty good. Uh, I know some of the cushion rings are kind of getting thin. So if we, uh, I'm gonna try not kill myself here. So I think that might be the two bell. It's wanting to kick off first. Oh. Sorry if that was an ear killer, guys. So it's not too bad. I've had I've had horns leak a lot worse. Um, just with the, and that's like right at its point where it wants to do something. Um, didn't sound like anything was too lazy to shut off after I shut the air off. I didn't hear any uh, elongated squeaks afterwards. So I'm probably going to really try and use. A lot of the original parts on this, um, even the diaphragms, uh, they have, of course, the diaphragms do have a pretty decent wear line where the uh, nozzle is, uh, with how wore out some of the nozzles are. But we'll see. I should. It sounded pretty good from standing right by it. Like I said, I'm gonna listen back to the video and kind of make an assessment. We'll clean it up, put everything back together as uh, factory as possible. I'm really gonna try and make sure even the diaphragms go in facing how they were after cleaning. So I'm gonna be really particular with this uh, with this one when I put it back together after cleaning. So, uh, but it sounded pretty pretty decent. So, so hopefully this one turns out to be good. I, uh, the three definitely is uh, concerning, and you got you guys will see why when I when I open her up when I open her up again. Um, other than that, there's nothing really too, f really too special about the horn. Um, after I looked at the three, the three was the first bell I opened up on this one. And after looking in at how much wear was on there, it really got me nervous for the rest of the horn. So of course I went through every bell, just opened it up, looked at it, really didn't mess with anything. Um, the uh, nozzle on the two piece one L is probably in the best condition out of all the nozzles. Um, the four is still in pretty good shape. The two, the two is in really good shape still. Um, but the the three has significant wear on it. The one is uh, starting to show signs of uh, pretty decent wear. So um, she's still kind of dirty. Uh, haven't like I said, I haven't done any cleaning on it. The only thing I did was I put a new cushion ring and a new back diaphragm in this, just because. Um, like a lot of times I know some people will get a, a horn and they'll just test it before cleaning it or they, they might not even open it up and they'll just honk it. But if there's an issue like that, that can get a lot worse and start destroying a lot more stuff, especially if it's a front diaphragm that's broken. You're really going to start to destroy your nozzle and the horn's not going to sound very good anyway. Um, so that's why it's it it's kind of... A good thing to open up your horns every now and then. I know some some people are completely against opening up the horns and uh, messing with anything, but I mean, I'm not really into resale, so my uh, I'm not worried about the ruining anything historical on it. Like at the end of the day, even after I clean it up and clean the diaphragms and everything and put a horn back together, it's still a really legit piece. Um, and it's a piece that I know that's going to survive for a long time because either I've um, put, I don't really have new diaphragms. I just have a bunch of used diaphragms and some of them are in really good condition, like almost new condition. Some of them are less than that and then some of them are less than that. So I don't really ever put new diaphragms in these. I just kind of reuse old ones and um, depending on what the horn is or what it sounds best with, I've had some horns sound better with a more used diaphragm than a slightly used diaphragm so I just like to know everything is good in my horns like I every horn I ever get gets opened up cleaned um, any issues taken care of immediately uh, just because I want to know that these things are not only going to sound good they're going to perform good and that there's nothing destructive happening within the power chambers uh, 
So, so that's kind of why I go through all this to make sure these things are sounding, sounding pretty good. But, um, yeah, a little squeaky, not too bad. Like I said, I don't think you guys could even hear that when I was just doing a full blast to close. Um, and I don't really quill horns like this anyway. Uh, you don't ever really hear these horns quilled out in the, you know, out on the main line. It's just a solenoid that kicks on and then the air starts rushing through. So older horns I quill, newer horns like this I don't quill. So I don't really worry if they're squeaking like that on a, like a really, really light light open so but like i said i think she sounded pretty decent i won't talk too much here i already talked a lot so so yeah guys be looking forward to more updates coming on this one probably none till after um my wedding is next weekend so uh this coming week i am going to be pretty busy so this is kind of my last weekend to have a little little fun with the horns for about a week or so so figured I'd at least get the kickoff video on this going and then um, I'll probably try and do a sound clip of the other one once I get the 3a put on it we'll see how that sounds so so yeah guys hope you enjoyed the video like I said uh, coming up in a couple weeks be looking forward to some more updates on this um, I don't know if I'll do any more with this horn this weekend. Might do the opened up video, might not, just depends on what I feel like doing, what I have time for, because I gotta get things around the house ready, so. So yeah, everybody, uh, take care, till next time.